Hey peeps, welcome back to another video. I know I haven't uploaded in a while, I'm very sorry for that, but you know, the launch and everything has been a little bit stressful. So once I have actual good gameplay, I will do a POV elemental video, just like I did in Black Temple and Mount Angel. So just like you can see in the title, we're gonna speak about how to do the most damage possible, or rather how to pass as an elemental shaman. First up on the list, we have the two obvious things, your consumables and your flame tongue weapon. Coming to the flame tongue weapon is basically just a straight DPS increase. There's no weapon oil anymore and your flame time weapon if you have it on your weapon gives you a lot of spell power for free so you should always have it up if you lack a weak aura for it and sometimes you catch yourself not having flame time weapon up i will link a weak aura in the description for you to basically be reminded to use it consumable wise the best flask for you is flask of the frost worm food wise you want firecracker salmon but usually in my guild at least provides a fish feast which basically provides you with all the attack power spell power and 40 stamina for one hour potion wise we're going to come to that later and any other consumes also going to be a later thing next up we're going to talk about the haste threshold that you want to reach because it's very important on the choice of the potion that you're going to use so you want to pre-pot wild magic because it gives you a big amount of spell power the reason you're not pre-potting potion of speed is pretty simple you want your lightning bolt to be one second cast time nothing below it the gcd is one second so if you get anything below it's just really awkward so basically with bloodlust at the start elemental mastery engineering gloves berserking racial and if you would also use potion of speed that's too much haste berserking bloodlust and even elemental mastery sometimes are too much i basically just use lust i use my ng gloves and if i need a little more haste i use berserking so basically i want to stay at that one second and whenever i get over one second i use the the last thing that I have for haste. Sometimes I use the engineering gloves and sometimes I use elemental mastery. You just want to stay at one second cast time for a long time because the more you cast, the more lightning overload procs you get, the more damage you do. And obviously, since you're pre-potting wild magic, later into the fight, you're going to use potion of speed because you want extra haste for your flame shock and have as little cast time as possible. Another thing you want to do to do more damage is pre-casting a spell. Obviously, lightning bolt has travel time, it also has cast time. So what you want to do is, if you have as an example 1.4 1.8 or whatever cast time you want to make sure that a little bit after the timer hits zero you have your lightning bolt almost hitting the boss because the tank will probably taunt so the initial aggro is no issue and with that lightning bolt you already have if it crits a lot of damage in and if it basically casts the lightning overload you have a lot of damage for free so basically what would it look like if you want to pre-cast and everything your whole rotation Make sure water shield is up, make sure your consumables are on, flame tongue is on, then you put down your totems. Unfortunately, the totems can proc sundial, so if you're really unlucky and you put your totems down before the pull, your trinket might be on cooldown. Then, whenever basically two seconds, three seconds before the fight, you want to use your potion of alt magic, precast the lightning bolt, then use your flame shock, elemental mastery with lava burst, and that's it. Then you just proceed with your normal combo, make sure your lightning bolt is one second, sometimes you have to use berserking, sometimes you have to use engineering gloves make sure it stays there fire elemental like i said snapshots so it's very important that all your spell power lines up for this specific totem thing also try to move as little as possible and try to interrupt as little as possible while you're casting elemental shaman is basically a turret it's a stationary thing that shoots stuff and you cannot do any damage while moving besides with shocks so very importantly there's some mechanics where you have to obviously move out so if people stack a lot and the thing goes on a specific specific person usually make sure you're somewhat close to the person so you don't have to as an example on the dragon fight and next ramus when someone gets ice blocked you don't have to run five or six seconds to basically get to the ice block so you don't die so try to basically don't stack with them be a little spread but make sure you don't have to move as much as possible also another important thing is never use lava burst when flame shock is not already on the target it's not a guaranteed crit otherwise. Unfortunately, that's not a mechanic that has been added into the game in Wrath of the Lich King. It's been added, I think, in Shadowlands, and we don't have it. So, like I said, the damage you lose if you don't crit is immense, so please make sure. Also, one important thing for your rotation. If Lava Burst is almost off cooldown, so let's say your Lava Burst has 0.8 seconds cooldown left, and your Lightning Bolt has a 1.3 second cast time. If you use Lightning Bolt, obviously, your Lava Burst will be already off cooldown midway through the Lightning Bolt cast. So what you want to do 
instead is instead of using lightning bolt that has 1.3 1.4 second cast time you want to use chain lightning because the cast time is way shorter so it lines up with lava burst obviously though make sure your mana pool allows using chain lightning you're not supposed to spam it per se you're supposed to use it as a gap filler so sometimes you might only use it two three maybe five six times per fight but not 15 16 times like in tbc what you also want to use in your rotation is flame caps they're items from TBC which basically increase fire damage. So it's really, really good for your flame shock and your lava burst. Flame caps do not increase damage of your fire elemental totem. So it's not important for that. Another important thing at the start of the fight that you want to do is make all your spell power improvements line up. As an example, your sundial, your actual unused trinket, maybe your tailoring cloak, your wild magic potion. You want them up at the same time. You want to get as much spell power as possible and then cast fire elemental totem. Fire elemental totem only benefits from spell power nothing else no fire damage no lust you can technically buff it with scrolls as well but that's a minor thing but you can if you want just important is make all your spell power improvements line up for fire elemental totem it will keep the actual spell power damage thingy that you had whenever you casted it whenever you lose your spell power because the duration of the stuff is over your fire elemental totem will still do the same damage now another obvious thing is have all rate buffs and have enough hit you want 11 percent hit you get 3% from your talents, which gives you 14, and then the rest comes from a Boomkin or a Shadow Priest. So make sure you have a Shadow Priest or a Boomkin in your raid. If you don't, then you need to get more hit. Another very awesome thing that people basically found out recently is that you can buy Totem of Hex from the vendor in Dalaran already. Websites usually say it's only a drop from patchwork, but you can buy this stupid thing for 25 emblems of valor in dalaran i will link the vendor in the description not everyone knows this so make sure you make use of it because blizzard basically i guess they fucked up and put a lot of items in that weren't supposed to be there yet or maybe they just don't care that are all the tips that i have for you today if you have anything else you want to add just put it in the comments so everyone can read it i hope you enjoyed the video i will see you next time